In this video, I will show you how to repair a charger. I just want us to see how repairs are carried out on devices, where we don't have any service manual to guide us through the measurements. On this charger, we see that nothing lights up. We have no indication at all. So let's open it up and see what measurements we can take on this load. So here it is. At first glance, we see that it uses an old type power supply. It doesn't have much capacity. And I have shown in a previous video how repairs are done on such power supplies. I will put it in the description below if anyone wants to check it out. And as I mentioned before, we will locate the capacitor that has the fault on top and desolder it. To discharge it, I will use a 220V lamp on its upper legs. so that if it still holds a charge, it won't discharge onto me. I will place the lamp here. We saw that it is charged. This is the first indication of the old-fashioned egoist. The gate remains charged. This means that the driver is not working. There is a problem, and we suspect it is after the rectification before the transformer. That is, it is in the MOSFET or the oscillator. Or even in the transformer. First of all, I will identify the components on the board. Let's see. What is on the board? I see another octal here. Which will be the oscillator. I connect my transformer and the MOSFET is right here controlled by the driver. And here is the rectification after my transformer. And here is the charging circuit where the battery charger is connected. I will apply power to measure at the output of the transformer after the rectification of the transformer. to see if it detects the power supply. I am measuring on the rectifiers. And I see that I have zero V. I have no output with the commutator. I will measure as much as the transformer allows. At the input, I will see that I have 305 V. So the first rectification is working. And on the inverter, if the voltages reach, at the input of the inverter, here, I see that the transformer's outputs also reach here. So it has them, and then we'll go to the MOSFET. To measure, we will see that they also reach the MOSFET. I check the legs, the other two legs to measure. I see that I have zero, or zero like this. Maybe one pin would have zero for grounding. The other is the driving signal. Regarding the MOSFET, I see that I also have zero V there. But in terms of voltage, I am correct. At the input of the MOSFET. I don't detect oscillation to isolate it. How will I continue now? I need to check the oscillator. My oscillators are located in the integrated circuit that is here at the back.
I will read its specifications and download the manual of this specific integrated circuit from the, the module on top says 1200p60. So a search on the internet. I will find the manual. And from there, I will see what measurements I can take on it. Let's check it out. Here we are. At first glance, which operates, we see that this is a PWI integrated course. circuit. And it also has a diagram here, which is its basic combinational circuit diagram. In this, we observe that at its pin 8, it receives power from the transformer at 300 volts that will come to us. At its pin 6 is the integrated circuit's power supply. It receives power from the transformer, and at on the 300 pin that will is come the aerator's output, pin 6 is the integrated is circuit's power supply. Hertz. Its internal power supply. And now, based on this plan, we will begin our measurements. Well, let's start first with the power supply. The 300V at the 8th pin. We will see that we have 983V on pin 8. So the previous one is powered normally. Next we'll go to 6 where we will measure if the internal power supply works. That is, from the 200V there, we should have a lower voltage that will operate the integrated circuit. We look at 6, oh the multimeter fell. So at pin 6 we have Oh, at 8V. The 8V, which the historic power supply doesn't even detect. The integrated circuit seems to be operating normally. It doesn't seem to have any short circuit or anything else. I will change now if it outputs 5 volts. The 60 kilohertz must be output by the oscillator. I will calibrate the oscilloscope. I will try to put grounding. We always pay attention here. Now it's time to place it carefully on top. We don't touch the board. With bare hands. And I count the five small steps in my process. I see that it works. From what I see on the frequency meter, the impedance is correct. Operating around 58 I will millions. go and measure if these values are present on the transistor. I see that I have no voltage at the MOSFET. No voltage is reaching it. I will check what is between the MOSFET and the collector by looking at the schematic. It is a resistor of 6 ohms and a divisor 6. I will measure on the resistor to see if there is, there is oscillation at the input resistor. We see it here at the resistor's output. No, I have nothing at the resistor's output. It seems that the resistor I have is loose. I will measure it with the only meter here. I will dust it off over the breadboard. I will measure it with only the Han Dodo. I will solder it above the blackboard to unload my Picanti again. All right. I will solder it as I said. To measure it. All right. Aunt Constano from Viragia. I take the saw. And I see that it is with GOM. 
It is not cami. So we change the resistance. It is with com. The impression so we is will cami. change the resistor. And now we'll continue a little to see what else we can do. Here we are again. I have changed the resistor. I will measure the transistor to check if the section is short-circuited. Then I see that it's fine. The transition looks good. I will apply power to see what we did. It doesn't seem to have anything else. It's not current. We see that the indicator light has turned on. It seems that the Photiotico works. He puts in a battery, the Cubotic works normally, and it mixed between the nonsense and the transistor. That was its failure. We have now seen that from the typical design of the integrated circuit. We found out what measurements we can make. On the circuit board, without having any guide in the entire manual, and that's roughly how operations happen on the circuit boards, in which we do not have plans, series manuals, measurements, something to guide us after all. The tests above and their standard plans, we can find out which measurements we will take to complete our repair. And generally, we don't get scared of circuit boards that have many components soldered on and need repair because we might not have service manuals, the schematics, but we know that all the assembled ones have their own schematics and their own typical schematics that we can use to take measurements. Under no circumstances do we change the resistors without taking measurements until we locate the burnt one. And we don't heed the usual advice. In mine, this capacitor was intact. Or on my board, this transistor was damaged and we start replacing components like this on the plates. With correct measurements, we save both time and money. In a practical measure. If you like the video, you know what to do. If you want to support the channel and shop on AliExpress, you can use the link in the description. Subtitles, author wave.